The Cavalcade of America. Starring Madeline Carroll in Woman with a Sword. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. With Madeline Carroll as Anna Ella Carroll, here is Woman with a Sword. Washington, 1862. A secret meeting in the office of the Secretary of War. Gentlemen, this woman's idea of sending a military expedition up a shallow stream like the Tennessee is preposterous. Mr. Lincoln, I appeal to you. Isn't much of Tennessee and Kentucky loyal to the Union? By the grace of God, yes, Miss Carroll. And the Tennessee River winds through this loyal territory? Later, if we're forced back, our retreat will be downstream with the current. Provided our boats don't run aground first. Mr. Stanton, I've had soundings taken by General Grant's chief pilot. The Tennessee will carry medium boats as far south as Alabama. Don't you see what that means? It means to me, ma'am, that you're either mad or extremely clever. I object, Mr. Stanton. Anna Carroll has done valuable work for me in the past. I sent her to St. Louis with a government agent named Judge Lemuel Evans to study our present Mississippi plans. And you know them to be untenable. The Union cause can't last six months, sir, if we don't strike a powerful blow soon. I agree, Senator Wade, but what do we accomplish if we do follow Miss Carroll's idea? We cut their principal railroad. The war may be shortened, and more important lives on both sides will be saved. Mm. Well, I see. What do you think, Mr. President? I think Miss Carroll's plan may mean the difference between life and death for this nation, Mr. Stanton. This plan and its authorship must be kept secret now. But someday, when we have a Union victory on our hands, I'm convinced the whole world will know she was right. The Union cause is on the brink of disaster when the Tennessee campaign, quietly authored by an unknown woman, begins. And with the fall of Vicksburg in 1863, it succeeds in hastening complete Union victory at Appomattox two years later. Now, on an April day in 1865, all Washington is out to welcome the hero of that victory, General U.S. Grant. And in a carriage moving down Pennsylvania Avenue... General Grant. They ought to be shouting for you, Anna. Oh, that's nonsense. Is it? Would these banners and flags be up today if you hadn't roped and tied the Tennessee campaign all by yourself? A grumpy Texas judge I know named Lemuel Evans helped a bit, too. Oh, look. Hmm? Look down the avenue. Where? The Capitol. They put up a banner, Len. See what it says? Yeah. Yes, I see. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Oh, Lem, isn't it wonderful that it's over at last? I'm going to see Harry Haywood again. But it's been four years. What will you find in common? Love. You're forgetting what you and your work have done to the South. But my whole idea in the Tennessee plan was to save lives, not lose them. Do you expect your Colonel Hayward, a southerner, to see that with the South in ruin? He's a rebel. He'll be bitter. Len, I truly believe that bitterness can be erased by a wife, a home, and children. Mm, perhaps. When are you leaving? Tonight. Tonight. You can't go, and I won't let you. Now that Grant is in Washington, Senator Wade and I can give him the complete story of your work during the war. I want him to make a public announcement about it. Think what it'll mean if people know what you've accomplished. Well, I'm actually, I don't really care whether anyone knows or not. But you can help in the work of reconstruction if you have an official position. People will listen to your ideas. They may not otherwise. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I know I am. Now, at this reception today, you'll meet a very important man named Bigelow Ashton. Ashton? Yes. He has a great deal of influence with General Grant. He's backing him for the next presidential election. You know, Mr. Ashton, it's hard to believe but that lovely lady just coming in is a constitutional lawyer of great distinction. You don't say. Naturally, she's never been admitted to the bar. 
Naturally. However, her ideas are respected in the highest quarters. And if General Grant runs, I mean, if the people draft him for the next presidential nomination, she may be a valuable ally. Hmm. Well, Senator Wade, by all means, present me to the lady. Delighted, sir. Oh, Miss Carroll. Yes? Uh, Judge Evans. Indeed. Oh, good afternoon, Senator Wade. Anna, I want you to meet Mr. Bigelow Ashton. Miss Anna Carroll. How do you do? You You know Judge Evans? Yes, Hello, Mr. Ashton. I was about to tell Mr. Ashton something of your work, Anna, during the war. Yes, I've heard my wife speak of you. It isn't generally known, sir, but Miss Anna Carroll is directly responsible for the Tennessee plan, which was carried out so effectively by General Grant. I'm afraid I don't understand. Perhaps we should allow her to explain. Oh, I... Well, please, do so, Miss Carroll. Well, Mr. Ashton, it was only that President Lincoln felt that there was something wrong with the original plans for attack down the Mississippi. I had some knowledge of rivers, their use in military strategy. So Judge Evans helped me, and together we conceived a new plan of attack up the Tennessee River. It was solely her idea, however. Her plan resulted in the Tennessee campaign, the capture of Vicksburg, and the eventual fall of the South. You, uh... You are joking, of course. No, no, on the contrary. This reception today should have honored two people. The lady responsible for the Union strategy and the soldier who carried it out. But even if this preposterous claim were true, madam, how could you expect anyone to believe it? Why, the public simply wouldn't accept it. Ah, but if General Grant made a statement in her behalf... And you're in a position to convince him, sir. Yes. Oh, I see. Senator... When you suggested I meet Miss Carroll, you intimated that she might be valuable politically to the general. As well she might. Now I find you merely want him to grant you a fantastic favor. It was a trick, sir, and one which I most emphatically disapprove. Mr. Ashton, I want to help with reconstruction in the South. These gentlemen are persuaded that I need official recognition for my work in the war in order to do it. Well, then why don't you go directly to the president? He's noted for his odd decision. Uh, Sir, a joint statement by General Grant and President Lincoln is what we'd hoped for, considering Grant's present popularity. Considering his present popularity, you think I would allow him to become the laughingstock of the nation? The hard-bitten general who took his orders from a civilian? A woman? Gentlemen, I'm not a lunatic. Goodbye, Miss Carroll. Gentlemen. There walks a cynical man, my friend. Oh, I wish we hadn't approached him. But, Anna, we had no idea he'd take that attitude. I don't think I care much for this party. I'd like to go home. And I'm going to be very ungallant and refuse to drive you. Oh, why? Because I'm going to the White House and try to catch the president between appointments. He's our one hope now. Come along, my dear. It will be my pleasure to drive you home. Anna, don't you go up to your rooms. I've been down here in the parlor waiting so I could warn you. Why? What's wrong, Millie? Oh, well, there's a lady up there pushed right past me when I tried to stop her. Oh, don't you know who she is? No, ma'am. Scared me stiff. She got on a big black veil, and I couldn't see her face. Well, I'll go up and find out what she wants. Oh, please don't. That woman don't mean no good to you. I can tell. Let me send the houseboy up. Tell her you went away out of town or something. Nonsense. You'll do nothing of the sort. And it might be a good idea if you brought up some tea, Millie. Well, all right, but my goodness, you can't say I didn't warn you. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Don't you recognize me, Anna? You must admit, madam, that your veil rather obstructs the view. Well, then, do you know me now? Virgie Stewart. I can scarcely believe it. Please sit down. Millie's bringing some tea. It'll be like old times. No, thank you, Anna. Oh, I'm terribly glad to see you. Why? Virgie, I know your sympathies have always been with the South. It's been so divided at home. But we were practically brought up together. Surely you don't feel bitter towards me now. It'd be very simple for you to forget, I suppose. When one commits murder, (laughs) one naturally wants to forget and to be forgiven for it. What are you talking about? Do you think we haven't known what you were doing in Washington all through the war? I'm a lawyer, Virgie. I've studied the Constitution a long time. I know and respect it. When the time came, I felt I had to fight for it. And committed murder as surely as if you plunged a bayonet into the back of each one of our dead soldiers yourself, Anna Carroll. Oh, my dear, you must stop that. The war is over now. If you could only know what a great heart Mr. Lincoln has, how carefully he's planning to make things easier for us. Plans, plans. You worked out a systematic plan to kill off all our young men. 
It was your plan that killed the man I loved. Do you think we'd accept any more of your plans now? Wait a minute, Virgin. The man you love? You thought nothing could come between you and Harry Haywood. But when he turned rebel, you fought him, so I guess your great love was only a lot of words after all. Well, to me, love was more than that. It was staying for the man I cared about. And before long, he began to care about me, too. Are you saying that you and Harry... We would have been married during his next leave. I went down to Virginia to find him. But he'd been killed, Anna. You had murdered him with your plan. Harry is dead. What do you care? He was just another Confederate soldier to stab in the back. Oh, I ought to kill you, Anna Carroll. I ought to, and I think I will. Virgie! No, I'll make you sorry that you ever had a plan. You've got to calm down. Mrs. Virgie! Anna, Anna, what is oh, this? Oh, then, so you've got somebody else to protect you now. Stop this, both of you. Stop this. Stop <laughs> Who is this woman, Anna? She's the girl I grew up with, Lem. She... Here, Virgie, please let me help you to the couch. You must lie down and try to get over this. Please, dear. He loved you. He never really loved me. I think he would have, Virgie. Well, who's she talking about? Lem. Harry Haywood is dead. Oh. And I'm, I'm sorry for your sake, believe me. Virgie thinks the Tennessee plan was responsible, as if I had killed him with my own hand. Ridiculous. Is it? Maybe she's right. Well, how does she know about the Tennessee plan anyway? Ironically enough, Lem... Many people in the South seem to have heard about my part in it. Anna, you and Virgie must know I'm deeply distressed about all this, but uh, I've just come from the White House, and Mr. Lincoln wants to see you. I'm afraid right away. Listening to Madeline Carroll as Anna Ella Carroll in Woman with a Sword. Tonight's radio play on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. wind blows over Washington in sudden raw gusts this Friday in April 1865. It settles cold rain on the city, celebrating the end of a long and terrible war. At four o'clock, Anna Ella Carroll enters the office of the Secretary of War and is ushered into the private room where the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, awaits her. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Well, good afternoon, ma'am. It was considerate of you to come. I think it's considerate of you to see me, Mr. Lincoln. Here, here, here. Sit down. Well, these are great days for all of us. Can you stand more good news? More good news? I think you've waited long enough, ma'am, for recognition of your fine work. So I'm going to call both House and Senate to session early next week. The Congress is adjourned till fall. Well, they can convene again. Won't kill them. <laughs> Make their constituents think they're earning their salt. Well, during that session, ma'am, I intend to make public your authorship of the Tennessee plan. 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 And I'm convinced that when your case has been presented, you will be awarded the recognition accorded to Major General. <laughs> oh, come, come now, Miss Carroll. <laughs> I'm sorry. On the contrary, I'm sorry. If I recognize the lady's tears, these aren't from sheer joy. What is it? I learned this afternoon that the man I hope to marry is dead. He was a Confederate officer, Mr. President. I see. The triumph I offer you turns out to be rather empty, doesn't it? I'm afraid it does. You know, Miss Carroll, my admirers, and I do have a few like to claim that my motives are always on a grand scale. <laughs> Actually, my reason for wanting you to become known to the public is very selfish. I can hardly believe that. But it is. We need you. You can be as effective in helping us to direct the strategy of peace 
as you were during the war. Do you mean that, Mr. President? I do. Think of those who want us to persecute the South. The bitter enders who want to go on fighting the rebels even now. It's my feeling, ma'am, that we must extinguish our resentment if we are ever to expect harmony and union in this country. I agree. Then you see why I want you with me in the government. I'm going to need help from people who understand the nature of our southern states. And with your legal knowledge, you can interpret the law for those poor souls who will be deprived of their rights. You will be a woman with a sword who can cut through hatred and bitterness. I'll help. I'd love to help. Mr. President, in Maryland alone, there are thousands of freed slaves. They'll need homes, work, education. Now, there, there. That's the way I like to see you look. Full of spirit. Plan. Plan. Yes, of course. Plan. Well, first, we'll have our little ceremony in the Congress. That's important because this recognition will make people listen to you. No more watching others take all the glory. I don't want any glory. Ma'am, if you have the will to do good in the South, we'll win this peace. By heaven, we will. Mr. Lincoln, I think you've saved my life. On the contrary, Madam General, it may be that for the second time... You will help to save the nation's life. Anna. Len? Now forgive me for intruding, but I I had to know what President Lincoln said. He's how he's asked me to help him, Len. And he agrees with you that people must know about my work. He's going to call a special session of Congress. That's wonderful. Now, come out. We're going out. Oh, no, not tonight. I couldn't go out. Come on. You want to be where other people can make you laugh, make your eyes shine, make you forget for a little while. Now, please, I have the evening all arranged. Where do you want to go? Now, that'll be my surprise. Put on your prettiest gown, wear your hair the way I like it best, and perhaps even smile for me a little bit. I'll try, Lem. I'll try to do all three. Here we are. And this is my surprise, Anna. Tickets to the theater. Oh, dear. It looks terribly crowded. How did you manage to get them at the last minute? A man isn't an influential government agent and a stubborn Texan for nothing, Miss Carol. <laughs> and I've been wanting to see this play. I'm so glad you are stubborn about my coming out. And I'm going to be gallant, too. Here, step carefully over this muddy spot. Thank you. There we are. Oh, goodness, it's chilly. I don't suppose you ever see fog like this in Texas. In Texas, we're foggy every Saturday night. <laughs> program, get a program right here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look, over at the ticket window trying to shorthorn something at the last minute. You needn't be quite so superior because you shorthorn tickets earlier in the day. Oh, it's Mr. Ashton. He's coming over. That's cheek, I'll tell you, after this afternoon. Good evening, Miss Carroll, Judge Evans. Have you seen the play? Yes, I trust your asthma has improved since this morning. No, well, my wife insisted I come out. She wants to see this play. Now, apparently, there isn't a seat left. You don't happen to have any influence with the manager, do you? I do not. I had understood General and Mrs. Ground were to be present here tonight. Perhaps they can help you out. No, that's just it. They decided not to come after all. The General's gone to Philadelphia. Uh, too bad, too bad. Um... No doubt you had some pertinent words with him before he left. Ah, oh, my friends, you're not going to hold my feelings in the matter against me, I hope. Your feelings in the matter hardly concern us, Mr. Ashton. Mr. Lincoln has informed Miss Carroll that he will call a special session of Congress next week for the purpose of introducing a bill in her behalf. Oh. Well, madam, I think it only fair to warn you that I'll do all I can to prevent both passage of that bill... And public knowledge of it. If it goes through, it will be Mr. Lincoln's doing. And his alone. Then we understand each other quite clearly, don't we, Mr. Ashton? My compliments, sir, and good evening. Come, Anna. Let's go and find our seats. Good evening. No hard feelings, I hope. Nothing personal, you know.
Look, up in the bar, Sam. The president. He's looking our way. We have a plan, Lem. A wonderful plan. He wants me to help him win the peace. And I know that as long as he lives, it will be a good peace. He's smiling at you? Yes. Mr. Lincoln. He's nodding directly to you, Anna. You'll be the envy of every woman in Ford's Theater tonight. I've been waiting for you in the carriage. Is there any news yet? The president was shot through the head. Come, let's let's drive around some more. I feel too restless to stay in one place. Driver. Where to, Judge? I don't care. Take the route we took yesterday afternoon, Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, sir, Judge. It's almost dawn. And raining again. There's no use hoping. He can't live. A miracle he stayed alive as long as he has. Look, Len. On the Capitol building. That banner. They must have forgotten it in the excitement. It's still lighted. Yesterday, the words were beautiful. Now... This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Oh, Len, we had a plan for the peace. He called me Madam General. He said I was the woman with a sword who could cut through hatred and bitterness. What can I do now? What would he want me to do? You still have your experience, your legal training. There's going to be trouble, hatred. The freed slaves will need help. It's your right as a citizen to help them. My right, then? Yes. It would have been easy with an official title attached to your name. But there's something every citizen can do in his own name. He can help one person, then another, and another. Yes, Len. For the sake of the man who nodded so confidently to me in the theater a few hours ago, I'll do it. He was without bitterness, and he'd want me to help cut through the hatred that may be ahead. As he said, a woman with a sword. Thanks to Madeline Carroll and Cavalcade's cast for Woman with a Sword. Tonight's Cavalcade play, Woman with a Sword, starring Madeline Carroll, was written by Virginia Radcliffe. It was adapted from the book of the same title by Hollister Noble, published by Doubleday. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Borey. Tonight's cast included Raymond Edward Johnson as Evans and Alice Reinhardt as Virgie. Next week, Cavalcade will present the popular Hollywood star Robert Cummings. Our play, The Reluctant Rebel, is an exciting and romantic drama of colonial America and the capture of Fort Ticonderoga. Be sure to listen next Monday night to Cavalcade and our star Robert Cummings. For our listeners, there is an interesting three-page picture story of Cavalcade and its stars in the current issue of Radio Best Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ted Pearson. With summer ahead, America's great outdoor season gets really underway. More and more people outdoors means there are more chances for forest fires, which last year blackened 30 million acres of our land, an area the size of New York State. So let's be careful this year. Thank you. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller and comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. (laughs) 
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.